Hi, my name's Phil, and let's talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the latest data suggestion for COVID in the UK that would say the second wave is incoming unless the government deals with the situation. So yeah, the second wave is incoming. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the thing about COVID data is that various terms come in and out of vogue according to the emphasis placed on it by either the government or the media, which is, after all, how the vast majority of people are ever going to find anything out. Disappointingly, the R value was all the rage a while ago when the government wanted the emphasis on it being below one and falling. This would be an indication that the virus was in retreat, as indeed it uh, certainly was considered to be and hopefully still is. But a few weeks ago, although the government was saying the R value was below one, the official data in a leaked report suggested that in actual fact the R value was about one and above one in certain areas and more importantly, rising. Now, this is not something the government, of course, wanted emphasising because they were busy removing restrictions. So there has been a conspicuous absence of discussion of the R value. Now, if the R value is about one and rising a few weeks ago, what would be the state of play now? Now, just to be clear uh, very, very quickly for those who may not know what the R is, so the R value is the average number of people. If you become infected, it's the average number of people statistically you are likely to pass that infection on to. So one means for each person that becomes infected, they'll pass it on to one other person. Now that's stable because it means that, you know, as people recover, more people are becoming ill, but it's the same number of people. I say recover, there is an alternative, but we don't have to go down that road, hopefully. If it is below one, then it means it's in retreat because for every new person that becomes infected, they are uh, on average going to infect less than one other person. If it's above one, then it's more. So then that's on the rise and it means the number of cases will grow exponentially, which is obviously what was happening during the first wave. And if it happened again, well, that would be the second wave. Now, what can be seen now? in terms of the data being suggested, is that the R value for London is about 1.3 and for England overall about 1.1. Now it's very difficult to get very reliable data on this because the government keep hiding it so we keep depending upon leaks. But Matt Hancock for example has been saying that there are about 100 mini lockdowns going on in England dealing with local spikes in different areas Though, as I say, we never get to see the details directly from the government. Now, various scientists are saying that if we are to avoid a second wave, which they still suggest is medically possible, then the government have to introduce measures that will not only be effective in suppressing the rate of infection, but that can also be policed. Because one of the main problems with the restrictions so far, from the legal commentator's point of view, even when we were in proper lockdown, was that the regulations were written by people with no deep understanding of the law. Now, that's generally the case anyway, because politicians don't need any qualifications. But normally what would happen is they'd be subject to parliamentary scrutiny and therefore public scrutiny. They'd get expert scrutiny. That would all feed into the debate. This didn't happen. Now, sure enough, the first regulations had to be brought out quickly. It's an emergency. OK, but after that, there should have been that parliamentary scrutiny and there never has been. They just announced things without any discussion. Now, that, of course, made it impossible to enforce for the police many of the regulations from the start. And it hasn't improved. Of course, my view is that this is not. Well, if it's not actually deliberate, it's certainly not seen as a problem for the government because we need to be clear about what the government objective here and it is not to suppress the spread of the virus. They believe that spreading the virus is good because it will cause us to develop herd immunity. Their actions and statements show that they still believe that crap that they were spouting back in March. So once you accept 
that the key figures in government believe in the herd immunity concept, then you also understand why they actively want the infection to spread far and wide and that they will only ever take measures that would suppress the rate of infection reluctantly. You know, so their objective is to encourage the spread of the virus in a way that prevents them being blamed for the high death toll, which will be directly attributable to the behaviour that they are encouraging. Now, on that point, I don't really want to get into this in any great detail again, but I'm now reading <laughs> that face masks are going to be compulsory in shops in England from the 24th of July with up to a £100 fine for non-compliance. I, I, I don't even know where to go with that because I said this at the weekend. I did a video because this is what was being reported. Uh, so I did my video at the weekend on that. Then the very next day I had to do a video going, oops, Michael Gove says that that's not happening. Now apparently it is happening again. I have no idea. No idea. I'll tell you what I will note though. A uh, couple of things. First of all, obviously this is something that will help control the spread of the virus. So from that point of view, it's a good thing. Never mind the motivation of the government for doing it. Um, obviously because their motivation is not in the interests of our health, they are not going to have it compulsory in too many settings. So it's already compulsory on public transport. It's to be compulsory in shops. Maybe other things as well. Who knows? I'm not believing it until, until it's enforced um, because I've, I've given up now. But the other thing is, so when I was reading on the BBC website, there was a little line here on their report of it. So it says... Um, more than half of adults surveyed by the Office for National Statistics in the first week of July, so quite recent, said they used a covering while outside their home. Lying bastards. Now, obviously, I've not been all over the country. I'm only in my local area. But I have to say, I see hardly anyone in a shop in any indoor setting, wearing a face mask. I mean, I commented last week when I went uh, to the supermarket that it was astounding. I nearly fainted because I found myself in an aisle with three other people, all of whom were wearing face masks. But that was just a weird situation because the rest of my shopping experience was coming across people that were not. Um, and then when you, you know, out and about, you're just not seeing people wearing them. When I went to the pet store, there was no one wearing them there. No staff, no customers. And there were plenty of customers and staff in there. Um, it was fairly busy, you know, given where we are. Absolute liars. I cannot believe that I'm in a part of the country that is massively bucking the trend. I can believe that there are some parts of the country where maybe people would be more inclined to wear them. Uh, I'm certainly outside of England. I'm talking specifically about England here uh, because they've been compulsory in Scotland. Uh, already to wear them in shops anyway. So we're just playing catch up really. Um, but yeah, I just looked at that statistic and I thought, don't believe that. Do not believe that. That's people lying. Um, but there it is. Hopefully it will at least mean that more people do start to wear it. Because even if, you know, it's only going to be made compulsory in shops. And I don't know yet. I'm not commenting any further on that until I know for certain. Not being bitten again. Otherwise, I'll be doing a video every day. Oh, face masks are, are, are going to be compulsory. Oh, no, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. <laughs> but it might also encourage people, if they're going to have the face coverings on them anyway, to just use it in more settings. Use it in the office, for example. Use it at home. And, and, and I will just point out again a couple of little things that people have noted about people's objections to this. Isn't it funny? how the only people that are whining and stamping their feet about having to wear this face mask, or I won't be able to breathe, how come they're all right wing? That's a bit odd, don't you think? And another thing someone pointed out, how is it that all of these people, these, these are the same people that try and evoke the blitz spirit when it comes to adversity, like they'd know adversity. And yet they're moaning about a bit of cloth or fabric across their face. Do they not know that in the Blitz, 
people had to wear face masks from time to time. So you should try wearing those if they want uncomfortable. But there it is anyway. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.